as a character is one that's become something of legend. I don't mean to sound like a dusty old fuck, but I can still recall the olden days of YouTube with videos of people getting trolled on Ventrilo and TeamSpeak through the soundboard programs with Duke Nukem saying shit like, I've got balls of steel. Back then, that shit was fucking hilarious to my youthful and more optimistic brain brains. And while I didn't really have any personal history with any of the Duke Nukem games at the time, I still thought that kind of shit was fucking awesome. It wasn't until many years later when I was actually able to see Duke Nukem 3D firsthand on a Sega Saturn no less. But prior to that, the only real knowledge that I had of Duke Nukem was that the games were supposedly controversial for promoting shit like porn and fucking murder. Being an edgelord masochist like myself growing up, I thought that shit was fucking badass. A cigar smoking dude who went around blasting the fuck out of shit while dropping edgy one-liners? Ooh, your ass is grass, and I've got the weed whacker. That sounded like my kind of shit. The Duke Nukem series was initially created by Apogee Software Productions, which would later be changed to what is now known as 3D Realms. The company would have a history of developing and publishing many quality games over the years, but that would eventually change with Duke Nukem Forever. Locked in development in hell for the longest fucking time ever, Duke Nukem Forever has a troubled history that I honestly don't think I could do any actual justice with a brief retelling. Initially announced on April 27th, 1997, the game wouldn't actually release until over a decade later. During its development cycle, the game went through ups and downs, changing engines and almost being completely cancelled after 3D Realms ran into funding issues, causing the company to have to lay off employees. It wouldn't be until a group of former 3D Realms employees would form Triptych Games, and with the assistance of Gearbox Software, with the game's ports being handled by Piranha Games, Duke Nukem Forever would be given another chance at life. I gotta admit that back then I was initially interested in Duke Nukem Forever after hearing that Gearbox was assisting with the development. I remember being excited at the thought and somehow assumed that meant the game was gonna be fucking awesome. It was like, the fucking Gearbox dudes? Oh hell yeah. Admittedly, this hype would die off quick as fuck when the game released and was met with low-end mixed reviews that shit on the game. I was still interested in the game, sure, but all the game's shitty-ass scores definitely made me look at it more cautiously. I honestly bought Duke Nukem Forever for like $4, so the goal here for today is to see if that $4 was actually worth it, or if I should have bought myself a large triple-triple instead. I've noticed recently that a lot of games that released in the early 2010s have a bit of charm to them. A lot of them weren't initially received well, but I think that there's something to the creativity of a lot of these titles, which is why I'm going to totally ignore the fuck out of the game's reviews and add my own two cents for no reason whatsoever. There's a lot of shit that I can't actually show due to it being not safe for work, but I'll try to explain everything in the game the best I can. Before moving on, as always, I tried the multiplayer, and to no surprise, it's dead as fuck. Moving on. Time to put on the beer goggles. In Duke Nukem Forever, you play as the titular Duke. Story-wise, it's different enough, I guess? After a brief introduction with Duke playing a video game based on himself, you're brought onto a talk show which ends up being cancelled due to the aliens stealing the spotlight. You're eventually told not to fuck with the aliens by the President of the United States, who goes on to tell you that the plan is to make peace with them. Not even a minute later, the assholes attack and you go all out, killing the living shit out of them without mercy. It's fucking fucking ridiculous, but it goes even further as the aliens are also hell-bent on kidnapping Earth's women. It's a dumb as shit alien invasion story, but hey, I mean it's a step away from the usual plots that we see in games. Right in the jewels. As for the gameplay, I don't think Duke Nukem Forever is all that bad. In fact, I'd say that there's some redeeming features that I'd actually give praise to. One thing that stood out to me was the level of random immersive attention to detail. You could do a lot of unexpected interactive shit. You you could draw on chalkboards, play video poker, air hockey, or even basketball. What I also found fascinating is that Duke can also use vending machines to get soda, which he'll drink and then chuck the cans on the ground. It's so unnecessary, but it's a nice touch compared to other FPS games. You can also screw around with other things like toilets or faucets, all that shit. Doing certain things will allow you to increase your ego, which is basically Duke's health. This could be anything from winning on slot machines, lifting weights, or really any 
many other kind of activities. It's not really groundbreaking or anything like that, but being able to interact with random shit in the world was a nice touch. It's actually surprising that shit like this hasn't become more common. Sure, it could be mostly pointless, but with video games trying their hardest to flirt the lines of realism these days, you think that more of these developers would actually attempt to make less things in their world feel like anything other than fucking set dressing. While I thought this interactive shit was really surprising, the level design of Duke Nukem Forever is where I'd say that most of my issues come from. That being said, I feel like a Congratulations! Congratulations! is in order for Duke Nukem Forever containing some of the most boring fucking sections that I've ever played in any video game to date. And mainly why I found myself feeling burned out on Duke Nukem Forever before I even hit the halfway point of the game. Having to seek out where the fuck to go dealing with massive amounts of confusion due to a lack of direction is kinda shit. And then when you add in the annoying fucking shrunk down levels, you're in for a fucked up time of head scratching and getting pissed off. And this is all before you get to the irritating driving levels. Holy fucking shitballs, are they the worst? You just drive from point A to point fucking B while periodically stopping here and there because you run out of fucking gas. I don't think I've ever found myself as annoyed as I was playing through these areas. It was fucking repetitive and after about 20 minutes, I was just about fucking done. I don't need things to be directly pointed out to me, but a little indication on what the fuck you're supposed to be doing in certain areas would have been nice too. Oh, and if you get stuck or anything, the game has the fucking audacity to insult you like a snotty dick telling you to cheat by looking up a walk through. Unfortunately, the repetitive bullshit gets even worse when you add in the difficulty spikes filled with annoying peekaboo shooting galleries and spongy ass bosses who have required prompts to finish them or else they regain health. It's this spear of annoying ass bullshit repetition that makes Duke Nukem Forever hard to genuinely like playing when you've been exposed to so many shooters that are way more fine than this fucking game. It's just downright annoying and feels like a slog. This is taking forever. While the levels are not the best and the difficulty can be shit, the combat isn't a bad time. It isn't really something spectacular, but it's at least interesting enough when you pick up weapons for the first time. Unfortunately, they're mostly pretty basic and there isn't really anything that'll be too surprising if you've played more than a handful of shooters. You have your pistol, your shotgun, your snipe, rocket launchers, all that shit. You can also set up trip mines, use decoys, and throw pipe bombs that require manual detonation. If there's anything unique, it's that you have the ability to drink beer and take steroids. Both of them power you up, but taking steroids steroids allows you to punch the fuck out of enemies and cause them to explode into meaty chunks. But like I said, the constant ducking behind cover because you die so fucking fast generally gets really annoying and makes for a frustrating time. Admittedly, this has been a difficult video to make so far. I don't think Duke Nukem Forever is great, but I don't want to completely shit on it either. The weird thing about the game is that it, despite it feeling kind of unique with the amount of random shit that you could do in it, it feels like it's missing something. I kept thinking that the game could have been better with more levels similar to the opening few where you're in more urban settings which is honestly where I thought the game was at its best. The highlight for me was the interactivity in these places and being in these desolate and underwater areas and caves and shit just felt fucking lame. I don't want to discredit the developers in any way, I think that the game even seeing the light of day is a feat in itself, but this shit probably should have been better than it is. There's solid gameplay mechanics but they're ruined by shitty balancing. If Duke Nukem is supposed to be a fucking badass he shouldn't be dying left and right to the stupidest shit. I don't need to feel overpowered or anything, but it would have been nice if Duke didn't feel like such a fucking bitch. I fucking played on normal difficulty and I shit you not. I probably died more times in the 7 hours that I spent playing Duke Nukem Forever than any fucking Souls game. There are levels that are extremely easy, but then they're offset by some of the most difficult fucking stages that I've come across in a long ass time. It was frustrating as fuck and when I finally got to see that credit roll at the end, the only thing that I felt was a sigh relief. Duke Nukem Forever is not the worst game that I've played, but it is one of the most frustrating. Would I say that it's underrated? Maybe a little bit. I know for a fact that I've played far worse shit, but for what it is, and for the extremely discounted price that I got it at, I think that Duke Nukem Forever is fine. It's not good, and it's definitely not the worst. It's just alright. That being said, I honestly couldn't say that I'd recommend anyone play it. Unless you're someone who's extremely fucking bored or just curious, there's almost no reason to anyways. There's way better
better shit out there for the price of what you can pay for Duke Nukem Forever. And with all that out of the way, there's one last thing for me to touch on, because there's fucking DLC. Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. In the Doctor Who cloned me, you once again play as Duke. It takes place right after the end of the base game, where Duke finds out that he's been taken captive and cloned by Dr. Proton, a returning character who had originally appeared in the original Duke Nukem. After that, it turns into another Save the World from Alien Extinction campaign when Duke is sent to the moon to save the Earth from an alien empress. The expansion has the typical pig aliens that you've seen in the base game. However, there are also Terminator like robots, these annoying fucking balls, and clones of Duke as well. There's some new weapons like the Expander and the Impregnator. The Expander basically makes enemies explode and the Impregnator shoots balls and has a unique melee attack that licks enemies. The DLC still has random shit that you can interact with to increase your ego, though most of it's recycled from the base game. Aside from that, the levels are far more tolerable as well. They're a lot shorter and less repetitive without as much annoying bullshit. They still aren't perfect and there's still a fair share of fucking stupid ass shit that you have to deal with. But overall, I think that being able to crank through the levels at a quicker pace with more variety feels a lot better than the main Duke Nukem Forever campaign. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it is better. The Doctor Who cloned me took around three hours for me to complete, and I think I generally enjoyed playing through it far more than the initial campaign. I wouldn't recommend anyone buy this either, but it is an improvement from the base game. Overall, Duke Nukem is a product of its time. I think that if Duke Duke Nukem Forever released maybe five or six years earlier than it did, it probably would have been better received. Video games have gone a long ass way since the release of Duke Nukem Forever. For better or worse, the game as a whole is very average. There's nothing about the campaign or the DLC that's really spectacular or stands out. I also feel that Duke's constant shit talking could annoy the fuck out of a lot of people. He really doesn't shut the fuck up sometimes, constantly saying shit left and right to the point of it feeling a little ridiculous. But I will say that while Duke Nukem Forever may not have been the best representation of the Duke, it was at least an attempt to make sure the character didn't die. Unfortunately, things probably didn't work out the way that the developers wanted them to with the game's development cycle. I can only imagine how much of a nightmare it must have been. All things considered, it would be interesting to see the Duke make another return someday, but it's hard to imagine that that day will ever come. I am the Duke. I am A number one.